Monday. This is Tracy Lewis from Stuff and Things. I spent Sunday crafting with Libby, and Libby had found a pin that had a really cool technique, and we both winged it to create the technique. I initially used a grid. I used some of the Stampin' Up! grid paper to do it, and then I thought, if I didn't have the grid paper, how would I do it? So I went on, I did look at some of the old faux tile technique videos, and they used a, they said pretty much, you have to have an angled scoreboard. And I don't have an angled scoreboard. I have the original, um, the this Stampin' Up! one, and this is not angled. I guess it used to have an angled insert, or maybe it came angled. I'm not sure. And I started to try to figure out how to use the that scoreboard, and I thought, well, probably there's a lot of people these days that only have a cutter or a trimmer that has the score tool on it. So I have the new Stampin' Up! trimmer, and I have come up with a magical formula that gives me diamond shaped squares. Here is the card that I am trying to replicate without using grid paper. And here is what I came up with. I am going to, here's my cheat notes and you can make notes and then I'll also have the notes in my blog article that I will create. So if you take a corner of, uh, this is all using the four and a quarter by five and a half, A2 size, full size front, that then you can trim down to whatever length you want or whatever size you want. But I'm starting with a full size. That gives me a little more, um, I guess, control of how I want my diamonds to look by starting with the full size. So I started with this full size, created my grid, and then trimmed it down however I needed it. So I would recommend that you start with a full size. And I think my my formula probably will uh, not work quite right with what I've come up with. So if I take the corner and I put it right here at the zero because this is a ruler going one, two, three, four, five. So notice I even put the the increments for myself to keep track. I find if I take, here, you gotta start with the long. So the long ways, I rotate it to the four inch mark. And what I mean by that is starting with the point at zero, I keep monitoring that the point still is at the zero and is in the middle of the track and I rotate this point to where it crosses the four inch mark. Now I have to correct because over here I've now shifted. So you're going to then slide till both points, the long end of the point is on one, the top part is in the channel and the far end is on the four. And it doesn't, to me, I'm not even looking at where it is this way. I'm just looking at, I want to stop it when it crosses the four line. Then I close, make sure my point is still at the center and, and it, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. Put the closest you can get. Okay. So now you have a line. The next part to do all the subsequent lines is whatever length you want your box to be. This is, this is a one inch. Libby, I think did one and a half. Uh, but it doesn't matter. I've after the end, I'll show you a really tight grid that I did because I was curious if my tight grid when I did it would not end up squares, but it, they all end up all four sides are equal. So um, I'm sure there's fancy math involved, but this is the non math version of this. So I've got my line. Now I want to take this line and each of the increments here are a quarter of an inch. You also then have the increments at the other side and you just line your, your score up. I'm going to go ahead and do one inch. So I just line my score up top and bottom at the one inch, 
close and score. I then take my next mark that I just made and line it up at the one inch top and bottom. As your line gets shorter, you can move however, wherever you need to move it to be able to see at the some, at some point this gets in the way of clearly seeing your marks. Uh, you have the centimeters at the top and the one inch mark at the bottom. So however you need to see it and then see I'm at the end and it's perfect. So I'm not going to score that side. I rotate it and I do this rinse and repeat till I have finished scoring one inch marks all the way across the page. Again, not wanting to overthink it, I just want my squares to be shaped at the 45 degree angle without having to use any fancy tools to get there. So this was how I did it. Okay, done with the first way. The next thing I'm going to do, now I have the long way. My note says, to do the short ways to three inch, which means I start my point at zero and I angle till the short point hits three and I make sure everything is centered, everything looks good. I guess another way that you can look at it is if this point, this line is horizontal but see again, that's not using line. So I'm just trying to keep it simple. I can think of all these added ways you can check and double check your work, but the easiest way is to chase, make sure this point is at zero and this point hits the three and that's on the short side. Close it, score it. Now you just get to slide your line over to the one inch. walk all the way across So I'm constantly using this one inch line and just sliding whatever line I just did is the one that I am now measuring at the one inch line. I believe that is it. Now, if you're curious, you can take a ruler and rotate and all four sides are one inch. So don't ask me, there was no magic math involved and I'm being kind of rough with my measurements. So it's really like one and a sixteenth because of there's the gutter that becomes like the grout line. All right, so that's one inch. And I just for curiosity's sake, I wanted to see if what would happen if I did half inch marks and this is what it comes out like. I think it looks pretty good. And then looking at those old videos, they have you using up a piece of cardstock. So I did, instead of using a piece of cardstock, and I'm going to brighten up my light now. Oops. Any kind of post-it note, the only trick, so I use post-it notes to, you know, if I want to do the horizontal here, I already learned that once you start, you want to start at the very top. I started in the middle, went down, then started at the top. And when I hit the inked areas that I had already inked, the ink would stick to the sticky part of the post-it notes. So I, I do recommend, and I don't want this channel to have any ink. I want it to look like a grout line. So make sure when you put your, so the sticky part is the closest, make sure you're stick them so that you don't, if you're using uh, whatever kind of daubers you're using, you don't move it accidentally. So got it stuck down. 
I'm going to grab Knight of Navy. Uh, there's a, today there's various different daubers. What I used was, I have them floating around here somewhere. Let me find them. I just had them. I will find them and come right back. All right, I finally found them. Actually, I had not unpacked them. Being that I live in a trailer, I have to pack everything away. So go ahead and ink up your sponge. Start in a circular motion in the corner. I was going for the ombre effect, so I wanted the bottom corner of the tile to be darkest. And you can put on more or as little or as much as you want until you like it. And then these can separate. And you can just replace them. I won't do the whole thing, but you get the idea, so. Then, when you're all done, you can decide um, how to trim it. What I find is the bottom here won't have any ink on it. And so when I trim it down, it'll have even less ink. So I sponged along the bottom to just give it some, some depth. And that is this short video for doing faux tile. And again, this is how the card came out. And that was using one inch squares. And you can use my technique of angling onto the new trimmer from zero to the four inch mark on the long ways and short ways measure zero to the three inch mark rotating your paper. And I think you will be happy with the results. And then there's really no math involved at all. It's just making sure you get your, your measuring points right and you're good to go. Thanks for watching.